At 22,621 feet beneath the Philippine Sea, the pressure reaches over 16,000 pounds per square inch. That is enough force to crush a modern nuclear submarine like an empty soda can. For comparison, the Titanic rests at a mere 12,500 feet, and this wreck lies nearly twice as deep, in a realm where no human has ever walked where the crushing darkness has remained untouched for nearly eight decades. This is the final resting place of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, now confirmed as the deepest known shipwreck on Earth. But the real mystery is not what they found down there. It is how they managed to reach it at all. October 25, 1944. The Philippine Sea off Samar Island. Dawn breaks over what should have been a routine morning for the tiny destroyer escort USS Samuel B. Roberts. Instead, lookouts spot the silhouettes of an entire Japanese battle fleet emerging from the darkness. Battleships, heavy cruisers, destroyers. The enemy force outweighs the American ships by more than 10 to 1. Captain Robert Copeland faces an impossible choice. His ship carries half as many guns as a destroyer, less than a third as many torpedoes, and moves slower than anything in the water around him. The Samuel B. Roberts weighs 1,745 tons. The Japanese battleship Yamato, now bearing down on them, weighs 65,000 tons. Any reasonable commander would retreat. Copeland orders an attack. At 7.25 a.m., the Samuel B. Roberts opens fire with her single five-inch gun against the heavy cruiser Kumano. The shell travels four miles before striking the massive warship. It is like throwing rocks at a freight train, but the crew keeps firing. They are buying time for the escort carriers behind them, thin-skinned ships loaded with aircraft that cannot defend themselves. The Japanese return fire with shells the size of small cars, at 7.55 a.m., a 14-inch shell from the battleship Congo punches through the Roberts' hull below the waterline. The blast knocks out the number one fire room, flooding the engine spaces with scalding steam and seawater. The ship shudders but keeps fighting. What happens next defies every rule of naval warfare. The tiny destroyer escort launches a torpedo attack against ships that could sink her with a single salvo. Captain Copeland orders full speed ahead, charging directly at the Japanese cruisers. The crew loads their torpedo tubes while enemy shells bracket their ship, throwing up geysers of water that drench the deck. At 8.30 a.m., with water pouring into her hull and her engine room flooding, the Samuel B. Roberts fires her torpedoes. The weapons streak through the water toward the cruiser Chokai. One torpedo finds its mark, crippling the massive warship and forcing it to withdraw from the battle. But the Roberts has taken too much punishment. A 40-foot hole gapes in her side, where battleship shells have torn through her thin armor. The engine room is completely flooded. Electrical power fails throughout the ship. After 85 minutes of impossible combat, Captain Copeland gives the order to abandon ship. The crew has just enough time to launch life rafts before their ship rolls over and disappears beneath the waves. They have fired every shell, launched every torpedo, and fought like a battleship despite being outgunned and outnumbered. Of the 224 men aboard, 89 would never see home again. Survivors float for three days in the tropical heat, watching for rescue planes, while sharks circle beneath their rafts. When help finally arrives, 120 men are pulled from the water. They carry with them the story of the destroyer escort that charged a battle fleet and lived long enough to tell about it. The Samuel B. Roberts had earned her nickname that day, the destroyer escort that fought like a battleship. But her final battle was just beginning. For the next 78 years, she would fight against the crushing pressure and eternal darkness of the deepest waters on Earth, waiting for technology to catch up with courage. The Philippine Sea Where the Samuel B. Roberts came to rest isn't just deep. It's deeper than Mount Everest is tall. 
If you could somehow flip the world's highest mountain upside down and drop it into this abyss, its peak would still rest more than a mile beneath the surface. This is the Hadal Zone, a realm so extreme that it remained completely unexplored until the 21st century. At 22,621 feet down, the pressure reaches 1,000 times greater than what we experience at sea level. Every square inch of surface area endures 16,000 pounds per square inch of crushing force. To put that in perspective, it is like having a full-sized pickup truck pressing down on every square inch of your body simultaneously. The human body would be compressed to the size of a marble in microseconds. The temperature hovers just above freezing, a constant 34 degrees Fahrenheit. No sunlight has ever penetrated these depths. The darkness is not just the absence of light. It is absolute primordial blackness that has existed unchanged since the ocean formed billions of years ago. In this environment, time moves differently. Without oxygen, without warmth, without the bacteria that normally consume organic matter, everything becomes perfectly preserved. For seven decades after the Roberts sank, this depth was considered unreachable by human technology. The deepest military submarines of the 1940s could dive to perhaps 400 feet before their hulls began to buckle. Even modern nuclear submarines, engineering marvels capable of staying submerged for months, implode at depths of 2,400 feet. The Roberts rested 10 times deeper than that. The few attempts to reach such depths in the 1960s and the 1970s ended in failure. The Trieste Bathyscaphe touched the bottom of the Mariana Trench in 1960, but that was a one-time descent with limited maneuverability and no ability to search for specific targets. Deep-sea exploration required not just reaching extreme depths, but being able to see, to navigate, and to document what lay on the sea floor. The technology simply didn't exist. Cameras could not function under such pressure. Lights were crushed before they could illuminate anything. Communication systems failed. Even if a vessel could somehow reach the bottom, it would be flying blind in an environment more hostile than outer space. But the abyss that claimed the Roberts also became her protector. The same crushing pressure that made exploration impossible also created perfect preservation conditions. At these depths, there is no oxygen to fuel rust and decay. The near-freezing temperatures slow all chemical processes to a crawl. Marine organisms that normally consume shipwrecks cannot survive the pressure. While shallow water wrecks deteriorate within decades, becoming unrecognizable mounds of coral and rust, deep ocean wrecks remain frozen in time. The Roberts was not just hidden by the darkness, she was preserved by it, waiting in pristine condition for the day when human technology could finally reach her. The wreck became a time capsule, maintaining the exact configuration she held when she slipped beneath the waves in 1944. Her torpedo tubes remained in firing position. Shell damage from Japanese battleships stayed visible on her hull. Even personal effects of the crew, scattered across the deck during the final battle, lay undisturbed in the eternal night. For 78 years, the deepest shipwreck on Earth waited in perfect silence. The crushing darkness that had swallowed her whole would also ensure that when she was finally found, every detail of her final battle would be preserved exactly as it happened on that October morning when courage met impossible odds. In June 2022, explorer Victor Vescovo approached the coordinates where the Samuel B. Roberts had vanished 78 years earlier. His vessel was not just any deep-sea explorer, it was the limiting factor, a titanium-hulled submersible specifically engineered to reach the deepest trenches on Earth. This was not exploration, it was an engineering assault on the abyss itself. The limiting factor had already proven its capabilities by diving to the bottom of every ocean trench on the planet, including the deepest point in the Mariana Trench 
at 35,853 feet. But finding a specific wreck in the Hoddle zone presented challenges that even trench diving could not prepare for. You are not just going deep, you are searching for a needle 306 feet long in an oceanic haystack spanning thousands of square miles. The search began with multi-beam sonar mapping, sweeping the seafloor with acoustic pulses that could penetrate the crushing darkness. At these depths, sonar becomes the only reliable way to see. Light travels mere feet before the water absorbs it completely, but sound waves can map terrain with precision measured in inches. The sonar painted a digital picture of an alien landscape, vast plains of sediment broken by underwater mountains and valleys that had never seen sunlight. GPS signals cannot penetrate seawater, so navigation required dead reckoning and acoustic positioning systems. The team deployed transponders across the search area, creating an underwater constellation that could triangulate the submersible's position within meters. Without these reference points, the limiting factor would be flying blind in three-dimensional space with no landmarks and no horizon. The remotely operated vehicle systems presented their own challenges. Cameras designed for extreme depth use specialized housings that can withstand 16,000 pounds per square inch without imploding. The LED lighting arrays consume enormous amounts of power requiring battery systems that can function in near-freezing temperatures while maintaining perfect seals against crushing pressure. Communication from the surface required acoustic modems that translate digital data into sound waves. Every photograph, every video frame, every navigation update had to travel four miles vertically through water as compressed data packets bouncing off the ocean floor. Real-time communication from the deepest shipwreck site ever explored meant overcoming signal delays and acoustic interference that made normal conversation impossible. Then, on June 22nd, the sonar detected an anomaly. The acoustic signature showed two large objects separated by 33 feet, exactly what you would expect from a ship that had broken apart during its final plunge. As the ROV descended toward the contacts, its lights gradually illuminated twisted metal emerging from the sediment like ghostly fingers. The wreck lay split in half, confirming the battle damage that had sent her to the bottom. Her torpedo tubes remained in firing position, frozen at the moment Captain Copeland had ordered the final attack. Shell holes from Japanese battleships gaped in her hull, testament to the 85 minutes of impossible combat that had earned her legendary status. For the first time in 78 years, human eyes looked upon the Samuel B. Roberts. The technology that had finally caught up with courage revealed every detail of her sacrifice, preserved in the crushing darkness that had protected her from time itself. The Samuel B. Roberts now stands as the deepest monument on Earth, a testament to the destroyer escort that fought like a battleship and the technology that finally honored her sacrifice. In the crushing darkness four miles down, she remains a protected war grave where 89 sailors found their final rest. Technology caught up with courage 78 years later, but the story endures in the eternal night where heroes sleep.